We got some spicy stuff coming to Satisfactory, guys. Some very spicy stuff. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time the farming mod got updated, so we went around messing with all of the new stuff. And also, we completed our muffin factory. So that once again, we have unlimited muffins, potatoes, carrots, bread, and most importantly, berries. So now even if we die, we can retame all of our doggos. And also, thank you everybody in the comment section of the last video, and gave me the recommendation to leave the sides open on our farming tower here. Because go figure, it's probably a good idea to let the plants get some sunlight. And also, this just looks much better. But now that means we are done with the farming mod for the foreseeable future. And now we can refocus back on our main base, getting everything automated in prep for update 3, which is coming near the end of January. And just for a quick recap here, we left things off completing our constructor array and making a repeatable pattern to do all of our constructor needs. Into wire and iron plates and soon iron rods. But we don't really need iron rods yet, so <laughs> we'll get to it. But before we do, we're also focusing on getting heavy modular frames so we can make a super train setup. So we went over this way and started on our assembler area where we have a totally not spaghetti, perfectly laid out warehousing area on the bottom floor. And then all subsequent floors will have 60 assemblers on each. So on the first floor, we have 60 assemblers making reinforced iron plates. And then on the next floor, we have 60 assemblers making modular frames. But I finished this part off on one of my Twitch streams, so you probably didn't see it during one of the episodes. And all of the items have been rerouted back to our warehousing area where we'll be able to pull 900 modular frames per minute. If all of our assemblers are running properly, that is. And now with all these spicy boys, all we have to do is make them heavier. And that should be pretty easy, because all we really need to do is get a modular frame, and then put a muffin on top. Less making it a heavier modular frame. See? Easy. Now we just have to do that like another thousand times, and we're good for the rest of the game. Ah, if only it was that simple. But no, we have to get all of this nonsense put together in a manufacturer, and that's what will get us our frames. So we need a ton of concrete, steel pipes, encased industrial beams, and the modular frames. But luckily, we have all these things strewn throughout our warehouse, so all we have to do is put them together, and we'll have frames for days. In fact, that's kind of what I did here. This is just a temporary setup because we needed to make a ton of, what are they called? Fuel generators to replace our power grid. So yeah, I just quickly set this guy up and oh my gosh, because I play so long, um, we got a couple heavy modular frames now. So that's pretty cool. And that's just a few hours with one manufacturer. Considering the setup we're gonna do, ho 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 you're going to have many, many frames. Frames for days. So now we just have to plan out where we're gonna want to build all of our manufacturers in the game. And it seems pretty clear from the layout of things. So if we have our warehouse to the left, our constructors right beside them, assemblers across the way, I think that means we're gonna wanna have our manufacturers over by the spine there because this is pretty much the perfect position for everything to congregate, because we have our warehouse right there, mainly, but also, for a lot of the manufacturing items, specifically high-speed connectors, they need thousands of items per minute. And it's pretty easy to bring thousands of items from the warehouse, which is right next door, over to here. Whereas if we had the manufacturers over by the assemblers, we'd have to bring the thousands of items from the warehouse over that way. And let me tell you from my experience already, it's not a good time. So yeah, this should work out well. Only thing is, only little tiny thing, is the spine's kind of in the wrong spot. Instead, I want it to be over to, what direction is this? Over into the west more. So it's directly lined up with the warehouse, and then it'll give us all of this free space over our hub to build all the manufacturers at. 
And for a project of this scale, we're gonna be using the area actions mod just to scoot this guy over. So we're gonna actually want to mark out these platforms as well, so we can line it up with the rest of the base. It'd be a travesty if it didn't line up properly. But I think we are all good there. Yep, got the whole thing. Doesn't really matter that that sticks out a bit. It's okay. Now we just have to mark off the bottom. Just like so. And now we can copy and paste this thing somewhere else. So, copy and paste. Whoa, that's a lot of items in there. Game is not gonna be happy with this one. No, sir. Now we have to kind of guess which direction this is. I'm gonna guess it's this direction. And we'll go over, I don't know, 64 meters and preview. Okay, so I picked the wrong direction. Let's go 128 in the Y direction then. Preview again. Okay, and now we're cooking. Let's just hide this for a moment before we actually settle it in. What do we have here? I think we have an answer. I'm just kind of staring at this platform, making sure it lines up with this platform. And so long as they do, we're okay. In fact, you know what we can also do? Is line this whole thing up with the warehouse. So we can move it up in the Z direction. Let's say by 32. Preview. Ooh, and we got pretty close there. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. We didn't just get pretty close, guys. We got it dead on. First try. Wow. Yes, everyone, everyone leave a like to help my ego even further. Not gonna lie though, that is pretty dang impressive. And also, there's a cozy bit of room in between the warehouse and the spine for a bit of belt rerouting. So that'll help too. For now though, we are going to press OK. Copy the thousand buildings, all right. And now as for our old selection, we are going to mass dismantle it. We're actually going to mass dismantle it and just delete all of the items. Yeah. Because yeah, we just copied all the items somewhere else, it makes sense that we delete them in their original location. Yeah. So, do you want the items received in a crate near you? No. They're gone. Lost to the void. But the spine has been teleported. And honestly, this is gonna be really weird for me, because our hub is right here, and it's like, we've been staring at this for so long. It's such a big change. And now there's just gonna be manufacturers stacked up until, like, infinity. Eh, maybe that'll look a little bit better, too. Maybe not all is bad. In fact, maybe all is good. Yeah. This was a net positive. And speaking of, hey doggos, how's it going? Long time no see, right? Oh my gosh. Yep, everything is a net positive. Already getting sluggo- What?! Already getting sluggo boys for days! Wow, that's some incredible luck. I actually came here to show off all of the radiation these guys brought me, but no! Now, of course, when we're recording, they're being all nice today. Like, legit, almost every time I stream. Nuclear waste for days. Oh my gosh, but this is such a pleasant surprise! Wow! It's probably because it's the holidays, you know what? That's almost certainly it. Oh my goodness, that is probably the best haul, single haul I've gotten from the doggos yet. Two yellow power slugs and a purple boy? Not bad, guys. Not bad. <laughs> oh, but anyway, like I was saying, They've been a little bad earlier. They've already brought me 10 nuclear waste. And it's gonna start becoming a problem because I've just been storing it here for now while I figure out what to do with it like long term. I don't want to bring it to that cave we were using earlier, so... Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll just make like a pit in the ground and have the nuclear waste drop way into the river beneath us. Maybe that's an option. I don't know though. Uh, you guys maybe let me know an option in the comments below. But right now, it's time to make not die. <laughs> yes, we're gonna make not die. <laughs> uh, we're gonna make the manufacturers now. Oh, we can't. Oh yeah, 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 no, we have to check the experimental branch. Because the manufacturers are getting a huge redo in the next update. So we have to kind of future-proof ourselves for that. Okay, so here we are in the experimental build, just in our test world here. Built a couple little things so we can check a few things out, and number one, they changed the color of the platforms. It's so much brighter! It's so much lighter! 
I like it. Little details on the side too. Oh, nifty nifty. And also there are a few other things that have changed as well. Most notably is the equipment workshop. So look at that. Oh, they're little pieces of the miners. Oh, that's cool. Got some gases. Okay. Some other little tools here and there. Neat. Oh, and an equipment wall. <gasps> a hammer. Give me the hammer. That will be our great weapon. Who needs a rifle when you can bash everything in? Alrighty, though. That's pretty neat. Nothing else is new, though. Uh, the Just the workshop or the craft bench has been changed, too. I guess the toaster oven for when we get hungry. 220 degrees, though. Brother, that's a bit much, eh? Looks pretty nice, though. I like it. A lot more detail, a lot more smaller tools. I'm gonna guess in the hub there's a bunch more details as well. Maybe. Oh, yeah. The craft bench, of course, is all changed up. That's looking pretty similar. What's going on in here? Do we have working toilets yet? <laughs> Not yet. One day. One day. Then maybe some toilet paper, too, would be nice. How's the ma'am looking different? No, everything else is looking about the same here. Yep, yep. Very cool. And then any new recipes? You know, maybe, oh. Oh, maybe there are used for completing space elevator stages. One spell elevator <laughs> per seven. Huh. Okay, so that's one of the big things I heard of in the new updates is, yep. The space elevator needs like a bunch of different parts now. If you guys are familiar with like Factorio, there's science in that game. So you start with the first bit of science, which I guess would be like this one. And then you have to use that in all subsequent pieces. So you go from one thing to the next part, to the next part, to the next part, to the next part. And you have to automate that whole system. Okay, and I can imagine that since we're making all of these like elevator parts, I guess we're gonna have to constantly make these items. So right now the game kind of works where you have to make like just a certain amount of things and you send those things into the space elevator. But now it's gonna require like a constant supply of these elevator parts. Maybe? Maybe I'm misunderstanding? Who knows? We'll see in like a month. Uh, anyway though, that's all cool. I'm excited to see how this new mechanic works out. Change our factory to make this all work. It's gonna be spicy. Hyper spicy. But we came here for one thing, mainly anyway. And that's to check out the new model for Ye Old Manufacturer. So they don't have a new image there, but oh yes, buddy. Better believe the new model's made. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. That is so much more cool. See all the outputs are in the same place, of course. Bruh. Bruh. This is amazing. All of the arms are gonna be like moving and grooving back and forth, putting together something. And then the output comes out the back here. Man, this thing looks like a super engine or something. This looks way better. And also very importantly, it's about twice as tall as the original manufacturer. At least it seems to be. So let's power that bad boy on. Is there anything in it we can make right now? Yes, we can make beacons. I'm pretty sure with the stuff we have. So you go in there, you go in there. Uh, iron rods, we can find those somewhere else, right? And a little bit of wire. Okay, so I guess we'll just destroy part of our beasts to put this together. I guess that's where we're at with things. And we can't even do that actually because we don't have enough items. Okay, well I guess we'll have to handcraft a few things. Uh, number one though, I took all of these out and spawn them in when we're in creative at another time because apparently the textures got changed. Now it's looking about the same. Looking a little bit different. A little bit more rocky, a little bit more defined. Not bad. Now the iron ore. This is the one I saw. I saw a picture of this on Twitter. Oh, that looks a million times better. Actually, you know what? That really does look a lot better too. Before it kind of looked like the sulfur where it's kind of like a kind of soft texture. Now it got some hard lines in it. Ooh, same with the copper, looking spicy. Coal's looking like... Coal? <laughs> Keterium, looking a lot more spicy too. And oil. 
Well, it's just a jug. Can't look much different anyway. Ah, oh, but yeah. This is way better. And yeah, bauxite's looking pretty much the same too. Cool. Uh, anyway, I guess I'll handcraft a couple things so we can make some beacons here and see this bad boy in action. Okay, well, I got everything together, so don't blink. But we are about to see this thing run for the first time. There we go. And how's it looking? Whoa, dude. Wait, 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 wait. That's sick. It gets all the items up there. Obviously, this is like a template. It's not going to show like the specific items that it's putting together. Oh, well, that's cool. Oh, and then all of the arms are picking up stuff and putting them down in. What the heck is that supposed to be making? Cube? Is that a trash bin? It's a very spicy trash bin. <laughs> and then what? Just puts that inside? And neat! That's totally, uh, what are we making? That's totally a beacon. 100%. Then it gets shipped off to the back. Compressed down. Or something. And that completes the cycle. Yo, once this has some noises, that's gonna be a big spice. Big spice. Oh, now it gets put down the back. Okay. Neat! I like this a lot. I don't know why they chose trash bins as the item, though. <laughs> it could have been like anything else, but nope. Apparently trash bins. Alrighty. So that's fantastic. Now, the next thing is figuring out the dimensions of this thing. So we need some walls. Which luckily I do have the materials for. Okay, and that's looking to be... That's four walls tall. And then this guy will go over top. And that's looking like it's about right. So four walls. And then how many spaces do we want to leave for each machine? Because we want to build walls around them probably. Or place them beside each other. Maybe we should try that first. So production, let's go to you guys, put you on the bar. It's looking to be about three spaces wide. Yeah, it's like a three by three. So same footstep, it's just four wall sections tall now. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, not a bad change. In fact, I like it a lot. This thing looks way better than the original, like toaster oven to super producing machine. But I'll be honest, my mind is really stuck on these uh, spell evader parts here. Like, this could be a really fundamental thing to the game, and my mind is a racing on it. However, we'll think on it more later. Uh, right now, there's one last thing I want to check on, and that is nuclear reactors. Just to see if they're working the same way. Hopefully they are. And there's no meltdown mechanic or some crazy thing that's gonna come in the update that's gonna, like, goof us. Target, ta-da, okay. We're making, like, no power. Thing is doing that. Everything seems to be fine. Probably no nuclear waste yet because we're hardly using any of the power. Okay, these guys are looking the same. Radiation's the same. Yes, beep, 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 beep. And then one last thing of checking this out. Okay, and that looks pretty much the same too. Okay, I think we're fine. Cool though, I think that's everything in the experimental build. So let's get back to the current version then. So we're back from the future with very, very important knowledge. And now we can actually set up our manufacturing area. And as we discussed, we want to build the manufacturers pretty much about here. And then aside from that, I don't know what else to do. But you know what would be really, really cool? Since we have our main hub here, it'd be really neat if we could look up at this point in just the rows and rows and rows of manufacturers going up into the heavens. So we could derive a system where we have our inputs here, they cross over this way through all the manufacturers and the outputs head over this way to some new tower that will do something. I guess another spine? Oh wait, that's actually a really good idea. Oh wait, that's like the best idea. Snap. Okay, yeah. So we'll have one spine there for the inputs, manufacturers, another spine here for the outputs. But here's the catch. We have our river going through here, and I don't want to build a spine over the river. So we'll build the spine behind the manufacturers? Like right back here? 
Yeah. I think that's like our only option now, eh? So I guess then we just get started on our prime design. But honestly, I can already see this is nowhere near enough room. Absolutely not. I guess our dreams of looking up into the manufacturers from our storage area is dashed. Because the best plan would to start the manufacturers from this floor going up. Because we have the extra space that's on top of our hub area. Ooh, but even more conveniently, check this out. Uh, the bounce pad elevators go up one, two, three in a bit wall sections as well. So, we can continue the floor design from our main elevator shaft for all the manufacturers. Wow! Okay, this was meant to be. And also, I think it'll be a really good idea to leave all of this space empty. Maybe we'll use it for warehousing or belt management, I don't know. But we'll start the actual manufacturers from this level upward. Because I'm also pretty sure that the bottom of the spine is gonna get crazy looking. I'd rather leave it alone as long as we can. So we will start then building out from here. Or actually, what am I doing? Uh, filling out from here. Now this will be kind of the forest floor we have to work with for the manufacturers. So now we gotta get some stuff and build a few and figure out what to do with the spacing. And also, where do we want to build them? Probably back here. Yeah. That gives us quite a bit of room behind them so we can do a little bit of belt management. And then lots of room in front so we can make things look cool. Alright though, I think we have our basic design now. So we'll have three manufacturers per floor and we'll have three floors. So for every single manufacturing item, we'll have nine manufacturers for it. Because I'm sure once we like overclock them all, their speeds will be fine. And also we have the room behind them in case we want to add on like an extra nine. But then there's that one problem. Of course there's that one problem. We actually have to build these backwards. Because the cool side of the new manufacturers is actually on the input side. Whereas the output side is a little plain and boring. So actually this is not going to work. We'll figure out a new design. Okay guys, I think I got it this time. It's quite a drastic redesign, but it should work out well. So this is now the main input for all of the items that come from the spine. And we've oriented the manufacturers this way. So that the four inputs are facing towards each other. Yes, making the middle pretty busy busy busy. While the outputs are just facing out this way. So there's plenty of room for them. But yeah. Because the sides of the new manufacturers kind of have like an, a tent arc. Like what's the best way to illustrate this? I think if we go into production, this. They kind of look like this shape, right? Except <laughs> the mega size. But yeah, since we have this design, both of the slopes kind of like slope into each other. And it'll look really, really cool. Also, we can't have the input side facing us, like in our viewing area. Because the belts would just completely block it out of the way, ruining the whole look anyway. So this kind of gets us the best of both worlds. And the centerpiece here looks pretty dang awesome. Very busy busy, which I like. And also it's nice and compact, yeah. Yeah, that's looking cool. And how it all works is just again, like we've been doing for the rest of our machines, is we're just using the overflow method because we're going to pump in so many items that the poor manufacturers aren't going to be able to handle them. And it's going to be wonderful. Oh, and also, it's going to be really clean to build this too. Like, all we need are the four outputs from the spine over to here, and then the outputs, or the inputs, sorry, are right there. And that's, like, super, super easy. And we can combine all three floors to have the same kind of manufacturer design. And then we just have to split each line from the spine into three, and that splits them all evenly into all the manufacturers. So big wow! However though, we won't see the full beauty of it for a little bit here, because I'm actually running low on motors. Like, I have probably about 200 left, and I don't want to spend them all just yet. Uh, we have to re-automate them. So that'll be a little addition to our assembler area. Which shouldn't take too long either. Like this. This is the masterpiece we had to get going right now. But now that we have it built, ah, we can finally get rid of one of our temporary setups, finally. And set up our first permanent manufacturing area. So you, goodbye. 
And all this stuff's coming with me, brother. Okay, but now it's time for the fun part. Belting all of the items over. So these will be the first items we're using this spine for. What a momentous occasion! Finally! This won't be a floating rectangle in space. But now it can function as the main logistics hub for our world. Anyway though, it brought the gang all together and now we can finally get these manufacturers up and running. So I've completed the belt work and things are lined up perfectly. So we can just do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And there we go. We just do this with every single input and that's GG. Oh yes, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Now as you might notice, there are a couple extra lines here. I'm bringing in extra concrete and steel pipes because these manufacturers mainly need them to make the heavy modular frames. So I was like, okay, if we're trying to overload a system, let's overload it. Let's bring over a thousand concrete and steel pipes to the system. That should work. Oh yeah, and these machines are getting absolutely blasted by items. Oh bud. First one's already full. This one's gonna be full in a second. I just forgot to connect one of the belts here. That's all good. Everything's all good. We're gonna have heavy modular frames for days. And then there's one other small change where I've just switched up the output. So now the outputs come out this way towards where our elevator is to these two bins. So one bin there, one bin here, and, <laughs> and I didn't really plan it further than that. I just want to have some easy access for the manufacturing items. So this works out pretty well. And we're a creative lot. I'm sure we can figure out what to do with them later. And also we'll add in the extra manufacturers later too. Because we're going to have another two floors of them. And that will bring us to a grand total of 6, 18 manufacturers. And how fast are each of them when they're overclocked? Let's find out. Boom, boom, boom. Let's push it to the limit. Okay, and it looks like we'll be making 7.031 heavy modular frames per minute per manufacturer. So that times 18 equals 126.558. So pretty much 127 heavy modular frames per minute. And that, my friends, is gonna be spicy. I can't wait. Anyway, though, that's gonna be all here for today. So if you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like, helps me out a lot, and I hope to see you in the next video. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>